gotta be him. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna tell him if he sells a vape pen to my brother again, I'm gonna kick his ass. Hey, you! Oh, hey, fellas! Butters? What are you guys doing? Butters, are you selling vapes? Well, sure. What you looking for? <laughs> I've got strawberry, vanilla, tropical passion. What? Tropical passion. It's like mango and kiwi. <laughs> Butters, you understand this stuff is an epidemic at our school? Yeah, and at five bucks a pop, we're gonna be rich. <laughs> Butters, this is for Cal. <laughs> <laughs> What is up, everyone? Welcome to live mixing. Happy, happy Friday. Hope, hopefully, everything looks good. Everything sounds good. Because of the actions oh, of one sexist, got some bigoted South Park playing in the background. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there seemed to be some weird stuff happening with this computer before I started. So hopefully, everything looks everything looks uh looks good. It looks good on my end. I don't know. I don't know how it looks good on your end, but um, yeah. So as you just saw. South Park had an entire vaping episode, which was quite funny. It, uh, it, it had to do more with like the Tegrity Farms and Randy, but uh, vaping played a big role in it. And um, man, it was pretty. It was pretty brutal. It was a pretty brutal portraying of vaping. But I wouldn't expect anything else or anything less. What the best part about it is, is that our own. Vaping Joe was South Parkified, I guess. Is that is that how you call it? South Parkified? Um, but they they basically turned Vaping Joe into a South Park <laughs> cartoon, <laughs> which is awesome, man. It's it's actually really cool because they I mean it looked it looked just like them. <laughs> so here here is what the cartoon looked like. There's Vaping Joe on the left, big vape Colorado. They got the tattoos, they got the goatee, they got the, the, the vape on the fucking, they got the vape on the, uh, the necklace there, and I'm assuming what they did was essentially just typed in, like, vape douche, because if you Google vape douche, I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll prove it to you, alright, if you Google vape douche, Right, just put in vape douche, Google it, search it. The first image that pops up is vape Joe. <laughs> and uh, I'm that is I don't think they were looking up, you know, Vapor Joe. I don't think they Googled Vapor Joe or they knew who Vapor Joe was. I literally think they Googled vape douche and they went, Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I get it now. I see. Oh well that doesn't they were like, oh yeah 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 I see this is the this is kind of the demographic I see it I see I mean I, it would have been nice to also see that one as well but uh, no I'm happy I'm happy they went after big good old vaping Joe man and he was a sport about it he posted it on his Facebook he was like got his big break you know <laughs> but it's pretty fucking funny it's pretty funny a few things were a little bit like you kind of roll your eyes just because we know about it. And usually South Park is going to play the worst of any side. So any sort of issue, whether it's political, or social issues, they really just like get at the worst of that core culture because that's what they do. They just pick fun at things. They they kind of throw it in your face and they say, you know, look how stupid this is, look how dumb this is. And um, it would have made no sense for them to go easy on vaping, you know, for 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 even to be like pro vaping, it would just make it would just be out of character for South Park. So I I really wasn't expecting that, um, but it was it was a little bit disheartening to know that <clears throat> that I don't know that the whole flavor argument is just that's just what the public sees, man. They they hear. That we're vaping on cotton candy and birthday cake and, you know, we're vaping on fruit roll up and stuff like that. And they go, oh, that's obviously targeted for kids. That's what the public thinks. It's obviously targeted for kids because of those flavors. Um, but that what they don't understand is that it's either you allow all flavors or you allow no flavors, right? And I think it's on the onus of the child and of the parent and the guardian to ensure that they don't use those products because legally you can't market to children. It just doesn't make sense. They can't, 
if you were to market to children, it wouldn't make any sense because children wouldn't be allowed to go in and buy them, right? So it it just doesn't make sense to to waste millions of dollars on marketing towards a generation that won't be able to purchase those products until years and years later. So you really have to look at it like, okay, what is an adult flavor? And there's no answer. You can, It's infinite. There's no answer, right? And I was watching, there was a piece on Comedy Central and you're going to get angry. You're going to get angry because when I saw it, I was just like, God, this woman is insufferable. Um, but I'm going to play it really quickly and you'll, you'll see what I mean, but I don't blame her because it's just, this is just kind of how it's just kind of how it is. Like that, that's just what the people kind of see. That's what they just assume in their dumb little brains. You know what I mean? Um, so it was, it's this, it's this piece here from comedy central, but I need to figure out where exactly she says this. I looked up the top flavors. Here we go. Mm -hmm. They are fruit cereal. And um, ice cream. The oh, top yeah. flavors are fruit, cereal, and ice cream. Yeah. What adult who isn't a pedophile, okay, <laughs> wants to put that flavor in his mouth? What yeah. are you talking okay. about? I always, that's my like number one date choice. Is like, oh, you want to get ice cream? Let's what? get ice cream. This guy oh. gets it, and I like this guy with the beanie. Your number one date choice? Yeah, yeah but like casually. You don't have to go to dinner. You're an adult. What are you talking dinner's about? Dinner's expensive yeah. and it's committal. Like, okay, what so if you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You blah, blah, blah. But you kind of get the you kind of get the idea. So that's that's the thing, right? And now when you go a little further, this is the this is the argument or this is the 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 conundrum that pops up when you debate what an adult flavor is. This is the conundrum that comes up, and this is the problem with that argument. And this is why this is why we can't ride that argument, nor the FDA. And I think the FDA is starting to learn that they cannot say you can't allow child appealing flavors because that is such a broad and non-specific thing. And I'll, and I'll give you a perfect example, right? She thinks that fruit roll-ups and fruit cereal and ice cream are child appealing flavors, right? So keep that in mind, keep that in mind and uh, listen. Person who works on like, before I had the job, before <laughs> I had the job. And she was like, I got you that. The epidemic. Still a, still a, who else you're marketing to adults after you hit a responsibility? <laughs> okay, having somewhere to. Do they ask what's the most adult on. flavor? Okay, that's a flavor. The pickability tastes awful. <laughs> be, being right. too, being too tired to vape. That's <laughs> very adult. Very adult. Maybe pumpkin uh, spice. I'm not sure. Yeah, actually, uh, that's a great one. Pumpkin spice. Yeah. I'm that's sure it's a really out there. good idea. Well, All right. Do you notice that? Do you notice that when he says pumpkin spice, they go, oh yeah, that's a great adult flavor, pumpkin spice. But how is that not the same thing as like chocolate cake? How is that not the same thing as even birthday cake or lollipop? How is pump, what makes pumpkin spice, which is sold in Starbucks, which children can buy, children can buy pumpkin spice. You know what I mean? There's that, there's a disconnect here between those ideals. There's a disconnect between that argument that will never be reconciled unless you have someone in an office somewhere literally write down every single flavor in the entire universe and get a focus group and ask the focus group, okay, what about this flavor? Is this a child appealing flavor or is this an adult flavor? There, then there's no other way to do it and all of their combination. So what's the difference? What if it's pumpkin spice, right? They say pumpkin spice, that's an adult flavor. Well, what if it's a pumpkin spice cereal? What if it's a pumpkin spice lollipop or a pumpkin spice fucking, I don't know, uh, pop tart? Does, does that now turn into a, ch a child appealing flavor? What if it's a pumpkin spice pop tart tobacco? What if it's a pumpkin spice pop tart whiskey? Now is it an adult flavor? What if it's a pumpkin spice pop tart whiskey lollipop? Is that now, you know what I mean? Like there's there's no, there's no end to that argument. So it's a stupid argument, but I understand she's not a vapor. She's not someone who works with flavor. She's not the FDA either. So in her little feeble mind, she thinks, you know, oh, there obviously is a clear distinction between adult appealing flavors and ch child appealing flavors until I'm sure someone, if, if someone actually sat down and discussed it with her, she would have a different opinion. But 
that's sort of what I saw with within the South Park episode that they kind of didn't quite touch on. They they don't really di- they don't really differentiate the idea of vaping between the idea of children vaping. The idea of children vaping is no one wants that. No no parents want that. No adult wants that. No vapor wants that. No one really wants children using any other products other than drinking water and eating vegetables. That is a given. And when you have products that are geared specifically toward adult smokers that cater to uh, you know, more of like an 18 to 35 style market with it, the way that they market um, and they have these flavors. Well, there's a, the fact that they're getting in schools is not a vaping issue. It's not a regulation issue. It's not a vape, big vape is coming to, you know, like they show in the show, big vape is going to come take over and destroy the, the plant. That's essentially what the episode was. Big vape was coming to destroy everything that, uh, Randy finds sacred in life, <laughs> and um, well, that's if that's true or not. It's not. That's not the point. The point is, there's there's that argument is just it's non-winnable on either side. It's non-winnable on either side. So when you start to think outside the box in terms of advocacy uh, for vaping, you need to really focus on adults. Do not bring up children at all. That should not be on your mind. You should not say we need to create products that are geared for adult smokers, but also with children in mind. This shouldn't even be in the equation because that's not a product for them at all. You don't create guns with the idea that children are going to use them. You don't create motorcycles or cars or planes with the idea that a child might use it. You create them for the person it's specifically meant to be used by. That's who you create that product for. That's how you have to fight it. That's how you have to go after it. You can you can't you just can't do that because then you see what happens. Then you get into an uh, an argument that is just unwinnable on either side and nothing gets progressed. And I think that is where a lot of the advocacy these days is failing. There's a a very big public image issue with vaping that I think is never going to go away. But it could be mitigated by education and it could be mitigated by like, look, if you don't like vaping, then that's not our problem. Fuck off then. You know what I mean? This is not a product for you then, obviously. It has nothing to do with you. This is a product for the people who want to vape. And you can't, you just can't have, you can't be creating a product with the idea that it might be misused. You know what I'm saying? Because then it's just, then it just gets stupid. So anyways, wanted to bring that up. I thought that was interesting. It is a fucking hilarious episode, the South Park episode. Um, but it's just so funny. I, it was one of my favorite episodes I've seen in a long time. I highly suggest you go watch it. You might be a little bit, you know, triggered at, at some moments, but it, you know, it's a, it's all in good fun. People will forget about it. The next. It's not like a, it's like, oh God, vaping is over. You know what I mean? I Some people on Facebook, like, some people on Facebook are so fucking dramatic, man. But... but it's pretty funny. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the chat. Just tag me at DIY or die. That way I can see your question. I don't really know what we're mixing today. I figured we just we just figure it out together. And that's why I named... Dude, this root beer is like... Hold on. <clears throat> I hit a cheesesteak, a Woodrow's cheesesteak, which if you're in Philadelphia, don't go to Geno's, don't go to Pat's. Don't go to gyms. Don't go anywhere except Woodrow's on South Street. Get the whiz wit at Woodrow's on South Street. You will not be disappointed. It is the best cheesesteak in the fucking world. It's not the sort of cheese whiz cheesesteak, like traditional cheese whiz cheesesteak that you get. It's better. They use better meat. They use a better bun. That part is pretty traditional, but it's just the way that they season it, the way they cook it is so much better. But they use this truffle whiz sauce. So it's a cheese whiz whipped up in like a truffle with like mar- uh, mushroom. I almost said marshmallows, <laughs> mushrooms and garlic and seasonings. And they whip this like sauce up. Then they just drizzle it on top of your cheesesteak. So fucking good. So much better than just plain cheese whiz. But I have one of those, a big boy with a side of fries and this root beer, main root beer, which is the best as well. And I'm gassy. And you know what? You're going to have to deal with it. And I'm sorry, but that's just the way it's going to be today. Okay. And I don't know what we're mixing. So you better get asking about 
profiles because I don't know what we're doing afterwards. Um, okay. Um, Dark Inertia 2. You got me back into mixing. I got an AWS scale and I love it. Any tips on adding Carmel to your Reds Remix recipe? Carmel to my Reds Apple Remix DIY or Die recipe. I don't even remember what that recipe is exactly. Ooh, that might be difficult. I do remember this recipe, so that might be difficult. By the way, any recipes, any articles, any research, any blog posts, any anything that I do goes on the website, DIYDiveVaping.com. Make sure you visit it. Um, yeah, that might be difficult um, because this is more of like a... This is more of like a apple juice you know what i mean it, and and caramel might not quite work with it as well as you might like so i wouldn't necessarily recommend that but if you do want to try anyway i would try maybe a little bit of flavors butterscotch with flavor arts caramel tfa caramel original and try that out and mix that mix that up in there and see how that goes. But I'm not I'm not promising you it's gonna be good because that is more of like an apple juice. And apple juice in caramel is just it'll be a little too watery and it might not work as well as you think. Have you ever tried the mixer trendism on all the flavors, some recipes he has? I think he's worth checking out. He has a recipe called Salty Bacca, which is nuts. I have not. I've not heard of that, but we can we can take a look. I have not heard of that. Salty Bacco? I have not heard of that mixer either. Either. I don't see it on here. So unless it's named something else, I'm not going to be able to find it. Whiskey is not an adult flavor. Alcohol is what makes it adult. <laughs> it's a good point. That's a good point. But I would also argue that it is an adult flavor. If you were to go up to someone and say, is whiskey an adult flavor? I guarantee you 99% of them would say yes. That 1% is usually the 1% that doesn't know what they're talking about. Will the flavor ban affect the commercial produced product or flavor concentrates that DIY use? It would only affect the commercially sold product. Any production is absolutely fine as long as it is not sold. That is the only jurisdiction the FDA has. They do not mandate. They can't come into your house and say, oh, you have an, uh, uh, an underground juice layer here. We're going to arrest you or we're going to fine you. You would, you would have to be selling them. You would have to have a commerce. You would have to have all of that in place, and then they could come after you. But if you're just making it, no, they can't do anything about it. You can literally do it in front of Scott Gottlieb himself. He will not be able to do anything about it. He might tell you to stop or something, but he's not going to uh, do anything about it. And when I mean sell any sort of transaction, you don't even just have to sell it. So if you just give it to someone, right? If I were to make juice here and I were to just give it to someone here at the office, even if they don't pay me, then I could be liable. I could get in a lot of trouble for that by the FDA, right? But if um, I'm doing it for myself, you know, no, they're not gonna find out. And you know what, to be honest, if you give it to friends and family, they're probably not gonna find out either. They're probably not gonna do anything about it. They're going after the big fish. They want to take, they want money. They don't do this, at, They listen, they don't, the FDA does not go after companies out of virtue to save the children, to help the country. They don't, they do it for money. Right, so once you understand that, you have to realize, oh, they're doing this for money. It's all about money. They don't care about. They just want to rob these small businesses, these large businesses, and take their money. So if you're someone who's, you know, giving a couple of bottles of juice to your friends and family, don't be like, don't <laughs> worry about, you know, the FDA coming slamming down your door because chances are they're not going to make any money off of you. It's going to be too much hassle for them to even worry about it. You know what I mean? Just don't, if you're in the, if you're in the juice industry, right, and you're not doing things by the book, then you obviously have a bigger target on your back because there's more money to be made off of you. So you have to think, you have to think of the FDA in that way, because like I said, they do, they do not care 
about anything other than paying themselves and paying their donors. And their donors happen to be big pharma, big tobacco, big business, conglomerates, energy companies, a lot of energy companies pay the FDA. It's a big, big racket, man. They're all just out there to steal your money. Wayne, have you ever tried? Oh, I already read that, didn't I? Oh, you, you said it twice, didn't you? Did you say it twice? No, maybe I read it somehow twice. I don't know. Which episode is it? It was the last episode. I don't know the exact name of it, but it was the last one. Impress me with a Boba's Bounty clone. Yeah, it's been a while. I actually still have some Boba's Bounty. Someone sent it to me to try to clone a long time ago, and I still have it. Or maybe it wasn't Boba's. I think he sent me a different one that was like their second version. And and I want to say it had like raisin in it or something. Maybe it was Boba's. I forget exactly, but it was pretty good. It wasn't, I wasn't that much of a fan of it, but I could see why someone would be. Hope you're doing great. First of all, what advice can you give on full flavor concentrates like Heisenberg or Pink Man? What do you mean by what do you mean by give you advice on full flavor concentrates? On how to use them? You do not know how to use them. It's basically what a one shot. I know Pink Man's a one shot, but you just mix them up at their reg at their recommended percentage, and you're good to go. You don't need to do anything else with them. I want to subscribe to DIY or Die, but PayPal doesn't give me the option to use my credit card. I think what you have to do is set up a PayPal account. You can't use your card on my site because I don't want to hold anyone's card information on my site. Even if it's through some third party. But you should be able to set up, you should be able to create a PayPal account with your card and then be able to do it that way. I'm not exactly sure. Please make something with Lavor Cookie, RY4 with an edge. Is your beard red or a lens filter? Yes, it is red. Yeah, it's it's weird, I know. My father is a ginger and my mother is from Thailand. So I'm like this Asian kid with Italian jeans and a red beard. It's like lightly red, right? Interesting. I'm gonna try to uh, to not cut it until after the holidays. I've never done that before, so maybe this is the year I can do it. Any tips for mixing ratios for Nick salt at 25 milligram? Yeah, you just want to turn them up to, I would double them. If you're not getting enough flavor after doubling them, then triple them. Just keep turning them all up. That's what, that seems, there's really no like clear cut answer for that other than just turn them up until it tastes good. I've had a recipe that, that think. 25 to 30 percent flavoring um and it's at a 50 milligram juice and you know the recipe tastes fine at uh you know i think it was like a 10 percent that it was normally at but once you put in all that nicotine then it just drowned itself out and i tried all different ways to tweak it and try to i'll lift this and then drop this and do this I'll, uh, at the end of the day we just turned it up to triple the percentage and it was fine He is one of the best mixers in Greece, and this mix shot is the best seller here of the whole company's line of mix shots. Hey man, if you are out in Greece, I would love to find someone in Greece to purchase my one shots as well so I could sell them out in Greece. I know you guys have a big one shot market, um, and I would love to bring either the Liquid Barn line over there or the Enyal Reclaw line. Um, but no, I've never heard of them. That's cool. That's cool. I'll check it out. I'll see... Uh, I'll check them out. Where are we? Have you ever worked any more on the Golden Ticket clone and any updates you could share? You know what? I worked a little bit on it and then the, the stuff came up with the wedding and all that. And then I kind of just been back on the grind with the, the, there was a lot of shit with the website and the podcast that I had to fix. But now that that's all done, maybe we'll do that tonight. Maybe that's what we will mix today. We will mix the golden ticket 
remix. Chocolate milk, pure chocolate milk. Flavor West yogurt was the was the the ticket to golden ticket. I just never quite finished, never quite put the finishing touches on it. So maybe we will do that today. Maybe we'll do something else. I'm thinking we'll do golden ticket though. It sounds like a good idea. Have you tested those new cap flavors yet? Wondering about the super sour. I have. I have. I have tested them last night. Let's see. If you are a member on the website, if you are a paying member, you uh, you can see my little mini review, my first impressions on the website. It's only available to members. If you're not a member, you know you need to be a member. You know that's just the way it is. Sorry, but I did test them out, and I will say. The tart orange or the tangy orange and the tart cherry are great. Those are excellent flavors. The tart cherry is actually tart and it's an excellent flavor. And the tangy orange is like a mix between sweet tangerine and juicy orange. It's like it's like right in the middle there. It's so good. But the powerful sour, it just doesn't, it's just not sour. I and I don't know if I'm not using it correctly. I mix it at a half a percent and then 0.25 percent two two or three mixes, and I really didn't get much out of them. And if you're thinking, well, is it just malic acid or citric acid or any other acids? It's a citric acid and lactic acid. This is what I know. It's a citric acid and lactic acid mixture. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, so it doesn't, it's not a, it's not a malic acid based sour, but like even tasting it, Even just like tasting it on your hand, it's like it's like not sour. It's more of a tart, like lemon, like a like a tart lemon lime flavor, but it's not sour. And it kind of reminds me of how they're tart tarting the cherry, the tart cherry, because it kind of has that same tang to it or that same tartness. Um, so I'm thinking maybe I need to turn it up to like one, two, three percent to really get that effect from it. But if you're expecting it to be like the super sour, the super sweet of sour flavorings, it's not that, not from what I've been testing. So that one's a more disappointing one. The other ones are really, really good. Um, I need to find which ones are which. None of these are labeled, of course. Okay, I think that one's the cherry. This one is too. And I haven't really tested these since yesterday. And this is like a this is like a red gummy flavor with some of that tart cherry in there. Ew. Overdrip city. Yeah, the tart cherry, the tart cherry is great. It's great. It's not like a maraschino cherry either. And it's not like a real cherry where it's kind of bitter. It's like somewhere in between that. It's more of like a candy cherry. There's a little bit of real deepness to it, but or authentic deepness to it, but it's not it's not like the be all end all cherries, but it's pretty damn good and it does have a tartness to it. And the tangy orange is phenomenal as well. Um, and I, I, I haven't played too much with it or either of them, but I really want to dig into them and see what, see what we can do with it. But the powerful sour, yeah, it's just not, it's not, it's not the, uh, it's not the sour that we were all hoping it would be, you know, which sucks, but what are you going to do? I mean, there's really, there's really no way there's really no way to do it. There's really no way to do it. I don't think anyone has figured it out.
That's actually really good. We have a very shitty situation here. They are going to ban mix shots. Oh yeah, I heard about that. We don't know what's going to be in the future. They want to ban zero Nick juices. P.S. Check their recipe and tell me. Yeah, I'm not going to check the recipe now, but I'll, I will get back to you. And yes, I forgot. I heard about that, that they are um, essentially banning DIY. They're banning components. They're really trying to go crazy on vaping. And it's because their economy sucks. Sorry. Sorry if you're from Greece, but your economy's terrible. And I guess they're relying on that tobacco money. So they said, fuck it. We're gonna, just going to ban vaping because we need all that tobacco money. That we're losing out on, I guess, because a lot of people are vaping. It's a shame, man. It really is a shame. I would be out in the street with a big old picket sign. Do you think the peace hour will mute? Yeah, probably. But we we shall see. I got to turn it up a little bit. See how that goes. VTA cherry is bloody good. Would that cherry pair with ice creams? I could see it pairing with an ice cream. It's not it's not as sticky or as vibrant or as saturated. It's kind of it has like that it's kind of juicier. So, it's going to be a little bit difficult to work with. It's more juicier than it is kind of like a concentrated syrupy flavor. Because for an ice cream, that you, the last thing you want in your ice cream is anything juicy because that's what waters the recipe down. And unfortunately, the cherry has a little bit of a juicy quality to it. It's I think it's more suited for candies and fruits and stuff like that. Lee H says, for the person that asked about PayPal, create a free account, then go to my wallet and add your credit card. Then you're good to go. Yeah, and then when you go to my site, when, it, when you choose PayPal, you just it'll just use your account. All right. We're all caught up. Yeah, maybe we'll do golden ticket. Oh, wait, I don't think I have any more yogurt. I don't. I'm out of yogurt. I haven't gotten my my order in yet, so we're gonna have to figure something else out. Damn it! It's not gonna work. You need that yogurt, Flavor West yogurt specifically. We'll do something else. And I don't want to use the new Capellas because you guys don't have them yet. And I don't even know if I don't even know if I'm allowed to even be talking about them. I didn't receive them from Capella either. Got them from from the back alley. I don't I have no idea what to mix. I'm kind of having mixer's block, man. I'm having some mixer's block. Are you used to wearing that wedding band yet? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I barely notice it now. It is nice being married. So far, <laughs> I, I hear bad things, but so far it's, it's pretty good. Let's see. Let's look at the top recipes of all the flavors. Let's see what all the flavors has. Chocolate toffee truffle by Dank One. Dank One released one, two recipes just now. Let's check it out. Chocolate toffee truffle by Dank One. Using Vape Train's ch chocolate mousse, all Vape Train, creme brulee, English toffee, and some sugar cane. Looks pretty good. Pretty good. I love, I love that profile. That's a good idea. Chocolate toffee truffles. I like that. Shout out to Dank One. Um, what else we got here? Son of a Peach by Wadey Loops. Son of a Peach by Wadey Loops. It's using the Peach by Cream, which is awesome because it's one of the best peaches in the game. If you don't have Wonder Flavors Peach by Cream and you like peaches, check it out because it, it's a great peach flavor. It's a little bit of a convoluted recipe. I'm not a fan anymore of the flavor art apple pie for a pie crust. That's myself personally. But hey, if it works for you, then it works for you. He's using uh, some princess cake in there. 
So then some nectar peach, which I don't have and I have never used. That's kind of interesting. Anything he says says about it? It's just supported by the nectar peach. Mmm. That looks pretty good. Weighty loops. What else we got? Ice cream land. By PMNB. Australian chocolate. And beer nuts. Wow. This is a very interesting recipe. I just used nut mix in a recipe the other day, and it and it to me it it just left like somewhat of like a burnt nut note in my juice. So I, I've I've kind of been apprehensive in using it again. It is a good nut flavor, but it's almost too authentic, you know. So juiced, so juiced is out with a new recipe. So juiced Christmas vanilla pudding. All flavora, eggnog at one, ginger snap one and a half, smooth vanilla at a quarter, sweet dough at a half, and vanilla pudding at 4.25, and some sweetener. Very spicy vanilla. A very spicy vanilla. Walking through the maze, I'm assuming this is some type of corn. Yeah, Flavor Arts Butterscotch, Holy Holy R.Y., Kettle Corn, Popcorn. Jeez, this, this was a bad idea eating a cheesesteak before the show. Never doing that again. So this is like a R.Y. 4 corn. That's really interesting. I'm trying to like picture in my head how the hell that would taste. An RY4 corn. I have no idea. Let's see. How about your take on RY s'mores by Koppel? It's like a like a chocolate graham cracker marshmallow RY. How about remixing Matthew Cassandra's drunken pears? You know, I haven't played around with pear in a while. Some type of like spiced pear. We could do caramel apple. I'm feeling that caramel apple. I could do caramel apple, Friction says. How about something with chai tea? Your take on Hilo's Tribeca. One minute wants this, wants that tobacco flavor. I feel like we did too many tobaccos recently. We just did what, three, two, three tobaccos recently? That's what it feels like. We could do a caramel apple. I think that would be appropriate for the season. It's pretty simple. Like, it's pretty, like, simple. So we would have to kind of spice it up if we were to do a caramel apple. You know? Let's look at the Mixin Vixens recipe here. Apple cider donut. Maybe we'll do that. Donut base from Zeppola. Vanilla cupcake with some funnel cake. Oh my God, look at this recipe. Interesting. Interesting. It's a big one. This is from Winstead. Jenny Winstead. Hmm. It's a big one. Dutch apple pie. I don't know if I have that flavor. Something heavy caramel. My best ice cream stone? I would take Flavor West vanilla bean ice cream. Flavor Art. I would do Flavor West vanilla bean ice cream, 4%. Um. TFA or Flavor Arts Meringue at a half a percent. And then if you want like a thicker ice cream, then put in a little bit of um, Capella's New York Cheesecake at like 2%. There's your ice cream stone. Or if you want more of like a prominent vanilla ice cream, maybe throw in some French vanilla, Capella's or Flavor West. If you want one with 
maybe you want it a little bit softer, like a more of a soft serve. You could throw marshmallow in there. But I find that Flavor West Vanilla Bean Ice Cream in terms of like just a standard stone worked so well with everything. Where TFA's, it kind of clashes with some things just because it's a little bit more rich. And Capella's is a little bit, it's a little bit too soft. I think Flavor West is somewhere in the middle there. All right, so it looks like a lot of people want. My goal is to torture the judges. <laughs> it looks like a lot of people want some sort of like apple, caramel, bakery, dessert style thing. And to, hey, we'll play off of uh, the mixing vixens and kind of, I won't do an apple cider donut, but I'll do something like in that realm. You know, we could do something like that. And I think I'm going to use the country apple. I just saw a mix and vixen recipe with country apple. That's like been my favorite apple ever since finding out about it. It's so good. And I'm just kind of over the Fuji thing. This is from Chrono Vapes. This is green THC. Very floral green tea and honeysuckle cake with buttercream frosting. I personally feel that this is my greatest accomplishment as a mixer so far. Green tea, honeysuckle cake with buttercream frosting. What in the actual fuck? Delosi? Is that Delosi, right? Delosi green tea with Favor's green tea and then... Delosi's, I think that's Delosi. Yes, it is. And then Delosi's Honeysuckle. One-on-one's Marshmallow Vanilla. This is a very, very interesting recipe. The Buttercream Frosting? I don't know what Marshmallow Vanilla tastes like, but it doesn't seem like any sort of vanilla buttercream would be coming out of this, but what do I know? I haven't mixed it. That's super interesting, though. I might have to check that out. Anyone who says this is my greatest accomplishment as a mixer so far, that's intriguing to me. That is intriguing. All right. All right, so what we might do is we'll do a, some sort of apple caramel thing, right? Call, that's what I'll call it, apple caramel thing. Normally you go Fuji, double apple, anywhere's two apples, um, flavor arts caramel, flavor arts butterscotch, TFA brown sugar, Capella cinnamon Danish swirl, bada bing, bada boom. There you go. But if we're going to do it, we're going to do it differently, I guess. That's the, that, That's what you guys watch for, right? You guys, you guys want to see me make some crazy shit. You don't want to see me make some basic bitch shit. So let's start with the country apple because I know I want to use that. I need to find it. I don't even know. I haven't used it in a while. Some liquor barns pumpkin pie. Yeah. 
There she is. Yeah, dude, this country apple shit is the bomb. Hmm. Country apple. And then I think the two apples would be appropriate as well to sort of, it's sort of like a little bit more of a punchier country apple. We will go 4% on the country apple with two apples. 1%. Just give it just give it a boost. Just give it a little boost. Now, how do we do the caramel? Do some flavor art butterscotch. Maybe some butterscotch ripple. And then I guess brown sugar. We do a caramel candy. We do caramel cinnamon roll. Salted caramel. Vape trains. I don't have vape train salted caramel, but I do have creme caramel. Just like French vanilla. I have butterscotch. Meh. And then toffee ice cream. Try that again. I 
I mean, salted caramel is not a bad idea. The problem is it just fucks your coils. It just fucks your coils. I'm leaning more towards the car caramel candy, maybe with some caramel cinnamon roll. Just a little, little bit. some holy vanilla some toffee I see toffee some bourbon some bourbon in there let's try the verb let's try some bourbon I don't know what to talk I don't know what toffee to use do I go with the, where is it? Toffee ice cream? Here it is. From what I taste on my hand, it's not, not too good. It's like a funk to it. Or do I go butter toffee by Flavor West?
The English toffee plate tastes pretty good. Toffee ice cream. All right, we'll try. We'll try with the toffee ice cream. This is the recipe so far. Country apple, 4%. Two apples at 1%. And then caramel candy. I'm thinking we're going to have to turn this down. So let's go to 3%. Caramel candy, 4%. With the caramel cinnamon roll, some bourbon, some toffee ice cream. Let's try it. I have a feeling we might need to add something to it to make it a little bit deeper. All right. Fifteen, yeah, 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 okay. Here, you know what I could probably do? Jesus Christ. We'll do that. <laughs> And uh, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there you go. The bourbon. Play some tunes. Just chill, man. We're just gonna chill and mix a little bit. By the way, I've been playing the new Call of Duty a little bit. I don't know how I feel about it. Not as good as I used to be. Blackout mode is like they need to fix it. But the core multiplayer, I think, is really good. I still have to go back and finish the new Spider Man game. If you guys haven't played that shit, highly recommend it. This might not be enough cinnamon.
Now that I look at it, it might not be enough cinnamon, but we'll see. I don't want too much. I really don't even like vaping cinnamon. Oh, I tell you what as well. You have to go watch. You have to go watch the uh, Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. It's so good. We, me and Kate just finished it last night. It's so fucking good, man. If you like spooky shit. If you like spooky shit, it's the spookiest. I don't think we're supposed to know how we feel about COD since Modern Warfare 1. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it, Rin. It gets a little confusing at first, but it, trust me, it comes together. There's almost like a mystery element to it where you're gonna be guessing like, oh man, what what happened? Who did this? How did they do that? That's kind of where like the whole mystery part comes in. But it, you you do not feel like you left, like you're left cheated or wondering what happened. Like they, they, they do a great job of like filling you in throughout the series. It's really, really good. Yeah, I agree. The, the ending was excellent as well. Yeah, I haven't finished Maniac. I have to go go back and finish it. I like Maniac too, though. Mmm. On the hand, it tastes pretty good. go fresh drip this is excellent mm. wow This is excellent. Dude, this, we are on a roll, yo. Last episode, we did the maple vanilla. That one was fucking phenomenal. And this episode's fucking phenomenal. You literally taste every piece of this recipe. 
you taste the apple up in the front and it's it's because of the two apples there's almost like a texture to it like that mealy apple texture i pick up that pretty i i pick up on that mealy texture more so than some other people do maybe more so than the general public to me i feel like maybe i'm just more sensitive to that sort of texture um but i definitely pick it up in this recipe it's a softer greener yellowish type apple on the front and on the finish is where that little warmth of the cinnamon comes in you get that cinnamon roll sort of warmth of the bakery follow through with like a nice caramel that's it's not as deep but it's 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 sweet and it's kind of vibrant it's like a vibrant caramel it's not as deep but that's okay because then the bourbon comes in and just cleans everything up with this sort of whiskey bourbon like finish this is so good right off of a shake that is phenomenal It seems like there's a little bit of like a, it seems like the body could be a little bit more saturated. Like if I were to sell this, I would, I would try to figure out how to saturate the, the middle of it a little bit more because I get a lot on the top and a lot on the finish where the body's a little softer, a little lighter. Um, and, and I'm thinking exactly how to kind of remedy that. I don't really know if I could it without sacrificing that sort of crunchy apple flavor. Yeah, it's just a, a little light on the finish. The ice cream will come out more in a few weeks. I don't know if I got weeks to I don't know if I got weeks to spare, man. It's really good though. Yeah, I just wish it was a little bit saturated in the middle. A little bit more. Maybe a, maybe a different caramel, something that sits more on the body would do better there. And it might just be me too. I, I've been vaping for some, some like really vibrant flavors recently. So it is nice to kind of have something that's not as like in your face all the time. Some baker's touch. Maybe Liquid Barnes ice cream? Nah. Yeah, the Fuji would definitely brighten it up. But... I, I want a little bit more like richness to it, you know, like a little bit more deep of a deeper flavor. Cause I think the top note is really, it's just, it's the top notes really good right now. And I don't want to mess with it. It's pretty well balanced. It's just, I, I just personally would like a little bit more on the body, but you guys are saying that it, it, it'll probably come through in a steep. So that's uh something we're going to have to come back on and see if it's uh if it's gotten better. Let me label it so I don't forget. I haven't been been labeling much recently.
It's called the apple thing. We're gonna call it apple thing. What's today? The 19th? I call that a success. We're on a roll. If you haven't mixed up the maple vanilla, I've already vaped it all. I vaped it all in the, in the that I just vaped it so fast. It was so good. But check out live. Uh, just look up recipes. It's under my name on all the flavors and as well as eliquidrecipes.com. All my recipes from live mixing will be both eliquid recipes and on all the flavors as well as my website. Um, and you can always just, you know, check out, check out my, uh, my user accounts. If you want to know what these recipes are. The country apple is just really good. It's, it's really underrated. I think, I think, I think we're going to need, uh, to get more hype on the country apple, man. Yeah, the bourbon really just adds that a little bit of a nice little accent in there. I can even see this pairing well with like a tobacco. We we'll call that a success. All right, any last questions before we get the hell out of here and enjoy our weekends? What do you think will happen if I swap out TFA Kentucky bourbon for vape train bourbon? Yeah. They're a little bit different. I think vape trains bourbon is a little bit easier to work with, but the Kentucky bourbon's pretty good too. So you might, you might, you should be able to get away with it. Might make it better. Might make it worse. You getting married has made you a better mixer. <laughs> I need to get married more often then. <laughs> this is pretty damn good, man. All right. What else? Any other last? Oh, I do have a couple things before we get out of here that I forgot to mention. So I made a new one shot that you guys can pick up at eSig Express, they just revamped their website as well, which is nice. They're using, uh, I forget the name of it, Shopify or something, but it's a lot easier to kind of navigate and stuff. But if you head over to eSig Express, let's fix this here. You'll see, go to flavored concentrates, one shot concentrates, and then you'll see Enyal Reclaw layers. Click on that and you have yourself Elizabeth's custard. This is like a very simple traditional custard. You can also get it at Chef's if you're across the pond. It's my take on a traditional custard. This is the one I've been talking about a lot, a lot lately, and it's meant to be used as a layer in your recipe. So if you want a really nice, rich, decadent custard without having to kind of develop your own and test all the different things, you could just use the one shot. Um, and then just pour that in at its recommended percentage. I recommend 13 and a half percent. You can top it off with some strawberry, some blueberry, any sort of fruits. I tested it alongside a ton of like, you know, uh, popular sort of flavors that, I'll, that I know people are going to mix with it. And it works really well with a lot of them all. I'm waiting for it to, sp to physically get to my office. That way I can write up a, um, a, uh, a thing for it, take some pictures for it. And then you guys will have an article with like my recommended pairings and then a whole comment thread. I'm hoping that you guys can say, hey, I love this at this percentage. I love it with this flavoring at this percentage. That way it helps the, the kind of bridge the gap between the new mixer and the advanced mixer. It's kind of like you go to the one shots, then you can come to these layers and mess around a little bit without having to worry too much about balancing. It's all done for you. You know, it's kind of the idea of it. And then um, 
and then hopefully get them into advanced mixing where they're where they are creating their own layers and layering layers and pairing different layers that they've made along with other different things and tweaking accents and subtracting and you know force muting and all those weird little advanced terms um but this is like that second little step there so I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it so if you want to pick it up it's 9.99 by itself it should mix you up um it should mix you up over 200 milliliters of juice so it's a pretty damn good deal and if you're using it in as a layer man it's going to last you even longer so yeah check that out and of course you can head over to liquidbarn.com if you want my tastemaker one shots these are just simple one shots and uh you know a lot of people have been talking about them all these recipes are super delicious as well this is different king's custard this is more of like a finished custard there's cust there's a uh, caramel and butterscotch notes to it uh, this one is not meant, you can mix it, but it's, I, I didn't develop it that way. Um, but this is a different custard. So don't think that they're this, they're similar custards or not. They're completely different from each other. Uh, quick, of course, and then water Malone. And um, also over in the UK as well, Chef's Flavors, you could pick up the entire Enyal Reclaw line and the new Layer line. That's going to, you know, be a thing now. And uh, lastly, I will be in Las Vegas for the Vape Expo. Is that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> I don't man, you think my nicotine is you think my nicotine is oxidated? Jeez, it's like really Time to change the nick, man. I didn't realize how dark that was. But yeah, I'll be in Las Vegas for Vape Expo, um, which is November let me check. I don't I don't remember the exact date. But if you guys want to come and chill, it'll be from uh uh November 9th and November 10th, I will be there in Las Vegas for Vape Expo. It's going to be fun. You want to come hang out. You want to pick up some one shots. You want to meet me. There's going to be a bunch of other mixers there. Rick, Dave, ID10T, Concrete River. Um, who else is going? Koppel's going. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of other mixers going as well. So we're all going to we're all gonna be there. And we're all going to be in like this nice little booth area. It's going to be super fun. And uh, it's like the first time like DIY has really been showcased at a show, which is pretty cool. We'll probably be filming some stuff. So if you want to stop by, if you're on the West Coast or if you want to make the trip out there, it will, it will be cool. I would love to meet any any of you guys. You guys are all real chill people. You're all the type of people I would hang out with. So come hang out, talk vape, talk shop, trade recipes. I don't know. We'll just hang out. It should be a good time. And other than that, man, I think that's it. I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the content that has come out of DIY or Die this past week. Next week, I have a best flavors video, that my, my, my favorite flavors ever video. So last week or this week, I did a worst flavors ever. Next week, we're going to do best flavors ever. And then we're going to do again, get back on the uh, sort of like top 10 cheesecakes and top five strawberries, stuff like that. Those do really well. And I know a lot of you guys just want to know about flavors and stuff. And don't forget, I will also be doing recipes and let's mix videos and articles and all that stuff on the website. So, so yeah, cool. That's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a good show. Check out this recipe as well. Mix it up. Let me know your thoughts. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Or you can leave them in the comments on the recipe itself. And uh, we'll see you guys later. We'll see you guys next week where we see how well this does in a steep. All right, y'all. Keep mixing. Much love. Peace.